Today we're talking about stem and leaf plots. Stem and leaf plots are going to be another way to organize and display our data. Stem and leaf plots are going to use the different digits of a number, so the tens, the ones, maybe the hundreds and the tens, to organize and categorize our sets of data and to look at um, how our set of data is similar and how it's different, our highs and our lows. So let's take a look at how we're going to use stem and leaf plots. Stem and leaf plots are made up of two different parts. The leaf is going to be on the right side and it's going to represent the right digit. So the ones place. The stem is going to be on the left side and it's going to represent the left digit, the tens place. When we get up to into the hundreds or the thousands, then it'll be whatever digit is on the left hand side. But for right now, we're just talking about the ten spot. So leaf is the one spot, stem is the ten spot. To start off our stem and leaf plot, we're going to start with two columns, stem on one column, leaves in the other column, kind of like a T chart. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to list our stems and then we'll list our leaves. So stems again are our 10 spots are going to go in the left column. Leaves are going to be listed next to the stem that they go with and they'll be the ones digits. We're going to include a key on how to read our stem and leaf plot. So in this stem and leaf plot, you can see that I've color coded it. Two on the stem side and seven on the leaf side, two and seven, means the number 27. So that's how we're going to read a stem and leaf plot. If we were reading the whole stem and leaf plot, we could read 24 as our first number, 27 as our second number, 29 as our third number, 30 and then 36. So it's a way of listing out the numbers using the 10 digits once and the one digits are listed as we go. Well, let's take a look at how to make one of these. Here we've got a set of data, the number of minutes that the average sixth grader spends doing homework. So let's go ahead, the first step that we want to take is to list the data from least to greatest. So we've got to look at all the data and put it in order. As I list the data in order, I've mentioned this before, I like to cross out what I've used so that way I can tell that I've already included it. And if I make a mistake, I'll be easily able to tell that because I won't have crossed out that number. So right now we've got all the numbers accounted for. So let's go ahead to step two. Here I have my numbers listed in order from least to greatest again. I want to list the stems from least to greatest now. So I'm going to create my two columns, put a title on it, minutes spent on homework, stems on one side, leaves on the other. I'm going to take a look at all of my stems. So I've got some twos, some threes, fours, I've got a six, and I'm going to go ahead and list those in the stems column. Now I'm going to go ahead and include the number five in my stems column, even though I don't have any data right here that starts with the number five, I'm going to go ahead and list it to keep my numbers in order and that will be able to show that I don't have any data that matches that particular number. So we'll see what that looks like in just a minute. But step two, list the stems from least to greatest. Step three, once I get my numbers listed again, is going to be to list the leaves for each stem from least to greatest. So again, I've already got my title, I've got my stems, 
Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to list each leaf according to the stem that it goes with. So for two, I'm going to list one, two, six, nine, and nine. I'll list my threes. I'll list my fours. I'm not going to list anything for five because I don't have any data for the fifties. And I'll list my 64. I want to point out a couple of things. On my twenties, and then again on my 30s and 40s, I have some numbers that repeated. So I had two nines. On my 30s, I have two twos. 40s, I've got three fives. I list each one of those multiple times. However many times that number appears, I'm going to list it that many times. And I'll show you why in just a minute but I want to make sure that I list all my numbers however many times they occur in my data. The other thing that I want to point out is that I don't put a comma or anything in between the numbers as I list them. So it's just a list of numbers. No comma, no period, no separation of any kind except a small space. So I've got my stems, I've got my leaves. There's one more thing left to do. and that's to make my key. So when I make my key, I'm gonna write the word key. I'm gonna choose one set of numbers. So in this case, I'm choosing three and two. I'm showing my line that goes through the middle and I'm saying that three, two means 32. So the last thing that I do is add a key so that someone else could read my stem and leaf plot. On to the question of what does the stem and leaf plot show us? So let's again, we'll take a look at our stem and leaf plot that we created for the minutes spent on homework. And the first question that we can answer with the stem and leaf plot is what was the most time spent on homework? So who spent or what was the time that was studied that was the most. Well, at 64 would have been the most. So what about the least amount of time spent on homework? Who studied the least? So I can tell the least amount of time spent on homework would be 21 minutes for my stem and leaf plot. That's the least value in that plot. What if I wanted to know how long the average student in sixth grade is spending studying? For this, I'm going to look at the length of the rows for my leaves. And I can see that the length of the stem and leaf for the four as a stem is much longer than any of the other leaf. So I know that most students are going to be spending 40 something minutes on homework, okay? This is kind of like a bar graph, only it's sideways. If you were to turn this on its end so that the stems were at the bottom and the leaves were at the top, it would look like a bar graph. Right now, you can kind of see it looks like a sideways bar graph. And if we look at which bar comes out the most, in this case, the values of the 40s, that's going to be my highest value. If we look at which value comes out the least amount, in this case, it's going to be the 50s. It doesn't go anywhere. So it's almost like a sideways bar graph that we're going to make with numbers. That's one way to look at it. So let's try to make your own. Try this one. Let's say that these were the scores on the last math tests that we took. We want to create a stem and leaf plot using these scores. First thing you're going to do, you're going to list the numbers in order from least to greatest. 
Step two, you're gonna make your stems, least to greatest. Third step, add your leaves, least to greatest for each of your stems. Last step, you're gonna add a key. Go ahead and try this, pause the video, and we'll come back in just a second and I'll show you how I made mine for this data. Let's look at my stem and leaf plot for our math test scores. You can see that I have my stems. My lowest value was a 60, so my lowest value of a stem is a 6. My highest score was a 98, so my highest value on my stem is a 9. I've listed my leaves in order from least to greatest. I've shown that my key, 8 with a 7 on the other side, means 87. You may have a different number in your key. You could choose any of the numbers. So your stem and leaf plot should look like this. Check it. Make corrections if you need to. So what does the stem and leaf plot show us? Well, in our class, the most likely score was what? The most likely score was in the 90s because that's my largest section of leaves. The least likely score was in the 60s because that's my smallest section of leaves. If you're in my math class, what are you most likely to get on a test? You're most likely to get something in the 90s. So we can tell this information from our stem and leaf plot. We're going to talk more about these in class. We'll try more examples in class to see you tomorrow.